Now you're in New York City right now, right? Yes, I am. And uh, it's really weird here, uh, but it's good because everyone's staying inside. Social thing, it's the right thing to do. I was going to ask how everybody is acting up there, if everybody's following the rules and looking out for themselves and each other. I, I think that's I think that's what we're having here here in the city. That's good. Stay safe up there. Uh, I was telling people, for those of you who aren't familiar, this is James Smythe. He works with us at the Yes Network. He's a researcher. He also is the statistician for all the home games, select road games. We like when you come to Boston, to Baltimore, and when they bring you wherever else. How many years have you been in the booth now? I feel like it's been a long time. Uh, it has. I started in August 2013. So uh, that's six and a half years ish uh so yeah this was going to be uh my seventh full season in the booth and uh hopefully um we can you know get get through this soon and uh and and we can get back to back to baseball and back to yankees <laughs> yankees in, at the stadium well everyone at the yes network misses it mike medvin already chiming in he must be taking time away from the kids just to you know antagonize us james yeah, and he's got his hands full. But uh, he he said what I would give for a four hour Yankees Orioles game with a two hour rain delay in the middle. So you know he's desperate for baseball. Okay, so I have a couple categories for you. We'll start off with some multiple choice. So those playing along at home, if you just want to reply your answer, or you can wait. So I'll read the question. I'll read the choices. We'll wait a couple seconds, and then you can give your answer. So we give the people at home a little time to play as well. Are you ready? All right. Okay. okay. We'll start off with an easy one. The Yankees have won how many championships? A, 25. B, 27. C, 28. James, your answer. Uh, he's giving time for people to play at home. <laughs> uh, 27. 27, that is correct. It is B. The Smeister, not stumped yet. One for one. We should have made this a drinking game, right? I didn't even think of that. Uh, is this water? <laughs> I, I just started drinking some of this. We should have made this a drinking game. Uh, it but is. a responsible one at that. Although everyone's stuck at home, does it, does it even matter, right? <laughs> okay. Who hit the first home run at the current Yankee Stadium? A, Hideki Matsui. B, Derek Jeter. C, Alex Rodriguez. Or D, Jorge Posada. Uh, I was at this game as a fan. Uh, in 2009, it was Jorge Posada. You are I, correct. I, I two think for two. Like... Two for two so far. Okay. okay. What year did the Yankees AAA minor league team leave Columbus? A, 2004. B, 2009. Or C, 2006. Uh, this one, I'm not too sure of. Um, they've been in Scranton for, uh, well over a decade, but, um, I'm going to say 2006. Ding, ding, ding. You are correct. Correct. They spent 28 seasons as the Columbus Clippers that eventually moved up to Scranton Wilkes-Barre after that 2006 season. Which Yankee captain was the longest tenured Yankee captain. Hmm. A, Donnie Baseball. B, Derek Jeter. Or C, Lou Gehrig. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm thinking it's Jeter because Jeter was uh, 2003. So that's uh, 10, 11, 11 years or so. So I'm, I'll go with Jeter. That's correct. 2003 to 2014, when he eventually retired. Speaking of retired, that brings us to the next question, James. All right. The Yankees have how many retired numbers, not including Jackie Robinson's number 42? Is it A, 24, B, 20, C, 22, or D, 23? Uh... This is going to make for riveting uh, video. Uh, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but I'll have to go counting all the numbers. So we have okay. 
Billy Martin at number one. Uh, Derek Jeter, number two. Ruth, three. Garrick, four. DiMaggio, five. Joe Torre, six. Mantle is seven. Yogi Berra and Bill Dickey together are eight. Uh, number nine was Roger Maris. Ten was Phil Rizzuto. Um, let's see, 15, Thurman Munson. 16, Whitey Ford. Uh, 20, 20 for Jorge Posada. That's a so, sort of a newer one. Um, 23 was Donnie Baseball. Um, the 32 for Elston Howard. Um, 37 for Casey Stengel. Um, 42 for Mariano. I guess that counts, not Jackie. Correct. 49, Ron Guidry. Um, 51 for Bernie. And I'm missing somebody. I'm thinking 20. Is it 20? Did you say 44? Oh, Reggie. And so, did you say 46? Did you say Pettit? Oh, Pettit. No, I forgot about Pettit. You're at 22, but that was impressive how you went from one, from smallest number to largest number. That's pretty impressive. We, we're going to give you that one because it was, uh, you knew the two that you were missing. You knew you were a little bit off. I, I, I will, I will, I will, uh, forego that. I, don't, don't count that one. <laughs> we won't count that one. Uh, also, there's really, really no prize at the end of this, so it doesn't matter <laughs> other than thank you, James. Okay. <laughs> Who is the Yankees' all-time career leader in batting average? A, Joe DiMaggio, B, Babe Ruth, or C, Lou Gehrig? Mm. Um, I, I, I mix it up with Ruth and Gehrig because I'm pretty sure one of them hit 340 and the other mm -hmm. hit 32. Um, I'm going to go with Gehrig. Ruth. Oh, all right. Okay. And Garrick was a career 340 hitter. So again, impressive. It's like a half right. A half right. Mickey Mantle hit how many World Series home runs in his career? This is a pretty, pretty crazy number. A is at 12, B is at 15, C 20, or D 18. Well, uh, we'll, we'll let people ruminate on, on their <laughs> back. Um, it is uh, 18. That is correct, my friend. And the, the last one of those was in the 1964 World Series in Game 3 against the Cardinals. Uh, he was facing Barney Schultz, and he was leading off the bottom of the ninth. And he told, I think it was Yogi Berra, but I'm not sure, uh, that he was going to get right up to the plate and send everyone home with a home run. And hit it. So that gave him... Uh, uh, that was what the record breaker, and uh, he's got 18 uh, World Series home runs. That's probably a record that'll never be broken. I don't see how it would be. That's just an insane amount of World Series home runs. Plus, to get there that many times to have the opportunity on top of it, that doesn't happen much anymore. Do you see dynasties like that? All right, whose errant throw did Jeter save on the flip play in the 2001 Divisional Series? A. Paul O'Neill. B, David Justice, or C, Shane Spencer? Build the drama for a minute. <laughs> uh, Shane Spencer. That is correct. On August 25th, 2011, Robinson Cano, Russell Martin, and this guy made Yankees and Major League Baseball history as the first team to have a three Grand Slam game. Was that third person who hit the Grand Slam, A, Mark Teixeira, B, Nick Swisher, C, Curtis Granderson, or D, Alex Rodriguez? Uh, I believe it was the Grandy Man. The Grandy Man, Cam, that is correct. And you guys that are chiming in here are pretty good, man. You guys are getting a lot right, very impressive. Oh yeah, see, I'm seeing the the messages in there. Great. Yeah, kind of cool, right? <laughs> I'm I'm brand new to Instagram. I just joined today. Just well, you to... had like a ghost account, I thought, but you didn't have anything posted. No, that that, that, I, that was uh, starting today. Oh, 
Okay. Well, thank you for making the effort. You're going to love it. <laughs> so I'm still getting used to how the app works and, and all that. It's easy. I'll, I'll teach you if you need any pointers. Don't some pointers. All right. This is the last one of multiple choice. And then we go on to the next category, which is numbers. Okay. So final multiple choice question. The Yankees, uh, this Yankees reliever was the first to win the Cy Young. Was it A, John Wetland, B, Goose Gossage, C, Mariano Rivera, or D, Sparky Lyle? Oh, people aren't chiming in on this one. Uh, who was, uh, Sparky Lyle. That is correct. In 1977, he beat out Nolan Ryan and Jim Palmer. Two Hall of Famers to be. Yeah. So the Yankees had a, a Cy Young winning closer in 1977, and then they pick up Goose Gossage. How about so that? Greg Nettles said Sparky went from Cy Young to Cy Young. <laughs> okay. We're on to numbers. It's a very official game. We are, we are going round by round here. This is. Yeah. This is I really need to develop some type of a prize or something. You know, we're, this is the first time doing the trivia, so I'm like, you know, we're, we're we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Before switching to number 23, what number did Don Mat did Don Mattingly wear? Um, I think it was exactly double that. I think it was 46. That is correct. It was 1982 to 1984, he wore number 46. All right. There are three players to wear number 99 in Yankees history. Can you name those three players? Okay. Uh, one obvious one that we all know and love, <laughs> Dex Judge. Um, and uh, I think... Uh, 2009 world champion Brian Bruni is another. That's two. And um, I was going to say Alfredo Aceves, but I, don't, I think he was 90 or 91. 91. He was 91, I believe. Uh, um, King Kong Charlie Keller. How do you know this, James? How do you know this? I don't know. He was uh, a longtime Yankee through the, the DiMaggio and Gehrig. Uh, dynasty in the in the 40s 30s and 40s and uh, I think towards the end of his career he played one year as 99 he played from 39 to 51 but he had that break in 44 where he was in the military so he did not play but he wore it uh, the 50 to 51 season so ah, you're okay. right. yep all right and that was his 50 or 52 uh, that was his final year in the base so oh he was with hold on let me dial it back he was with Detroit 50, 50 and 51. He came back to the Yankees in 52, only played in a handful of games, but he was wearing number 99. The Yankees do, the Yankees do bring back some of, their, some of their old greats for another turn if they leave and go somewhere else. Yeah, right? All right, how many Yankees wore the now-retired number four jersey? Um, I guess just Luke Gehrig? Yeah, that was a little bit of a, oh, Jared Boschnack, what is this? Hold on, let me go back. Oh. Baseball <laughs> trivia savant. Don't make his head too big. That's our uh, our uh, producer at the Yes Network. Don't you worry, Jared. You can get on this next time. We'll see how he does. Maybe that's why I should keep score and then bring somebody else on and see how they do. Then set up a head-to-head -head competition with some of the best baseball trivia minds. I'm kind of liking it. Sounds good. I'm Thank liking you. it. All right. You got that one right. It was a bit of a trick question, but can't trick you because it is Stump Smythe, and so far, I have not done a very good job. All right, there are currently three players on the Yankees roster who are the only ones to wear that respective number for the Yankees. It all happened last season in 2019. Can you name those three players? So these are three guys who... Debuted new numbers for the Yankees, essentially. Their, their number. Yeah. All um, hmm. That's a really good question. I think you just stumped Smythe. Stump Smythe! I don't get a prize, but... Uh, was was Adonis Rosa one of them? No. They are yeah. guys that are still in the organization. Okay. One was... Yeah, well... I'll get you. 
I'll get you. Sure, you know one of them at least. I'll give you two of them for pitchers. Okay, so well, and this is according to BaseballReference.com. Right? And and they are they certainly are an authority on on the uniform numbers and all that. Um, so like, would Adam Adovino count as the first zero? First zero. Okay, we're on the right track. We have okay. another pitcher, a reliever, and I'll give you a hint. He went to the same college as someone else on the team, same university as someone else on the team. Hmm. So only a handful of guys that went to college. Yeah, and even and he went to the same college. Yeah, I uh, believe. <laughs> I'm trying to think of guys with higher numbers. Yeah. Uh, man, I I just don't know. David Hale, who debuted. Oh. May 21st, 2019, with number 75. He had pitched before, but wearing number 75. And he's a Princeton guy, right? As is Mike, Mike Ford. Ford. Trying to piece it together for you. The other one is Tyro Estrada. Remember, he was number 30. Then Edwin Encarnacion joined the team. So he went to 90. And now I believe he's 71 or 72. Yeah, there have been some number shakeups uh, this year. Um, there have been. You know, Luke Boyd going to 59? Yes. And he said his brother was just so moved. I spoke to him today for the Yes Network. Again, if anybody didn't see that interview, please check out Yes's Instagram, Yes's Twitter, Yes's Facebook, YesNetwork.com. We've been doing oh, more. And more. What's that? I was saying, check it out. It's great. Check oh. it out. Yeah. And he was saying his brother was just so touched. But he's still, you know, a little tight-lipped on exactly what Garrett Cole gave him. <laughs> to get the number. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm calling a real challenge. The challenge portion of... You know, we're warming you up here. Okay. Speaking of Garrett Cole, he led the AL in ERA last season. Who was the last Yankee to lead the American League in ERA? This is a tough one, and they've actually had one of the longest... Um, droughts, yeah. So having a league leader on their team, uh, 1980, and it's not who I bet a lot of the folks watching might be thinking Ron Guidry. It's yeah. not. Hey, yes, that is correct. I looked. At, I, I looked at it three times. I'm like, that can't be correct. That can't be correct. And I was like, that is correct. Whoa. And they, so they, I was they, thinking they, Guidry they, too. What's that? They've had close calls at Coney. Mm -hmm. Clemens, uh, maybe even Chen Ming Wong, some second and third place finishes, Severino a couple of years ago, but they, they haven't had a, a league ERA leader in a while. You're the ultimate setup guy because you mentioned David Cohn, and the next one has to do with our dear friend David Cohn. Cody. Who is the last batter David Cohn faced to finish his perfect game? You know everyone read Full Count, so they should know this. They, Jack they, Curry, David Cohn's book, it's out It's out on the shelves right now. Yes, what? if you're if you're cooped up at home and... <laughs> Now's the time. Stack, stack of books to read, add, add it to the queue. Uh, Expo shortstop Orlando Cabrera. Okay, I got two for extra credit. Oh. Who? Credit for what? We don't know. Hey, uh, who? Rules as we go along, right? Who threw out the first pitch for that game? Uh, it, it was uh, kismet that it, uh, it was Yogi Berra and Don Larson. That's correct. It's pretty wild when you think of that. I know we've heard the story so many times, but the way things work out is crazy. Yeah, it's just nuts. Okay, this is another one that's maybe a little tricky. Some people may be leaning another way, but... I have faith in you, Smythe. Stump in the Smythe. I don't think so on this one. Who was the winning pitcher of the clinching Game 6 of the 1996 World Series for the Yankees? Uh, I will pause for dramatic effect. Mm -hmm. uh, I, did have a, I did have a Jeopardy song up like a second ago, but hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Play it, baby. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Jimmy Key. That is correct. 
Jimmy Key in game six, winning pitcher. Beat the great Greg Maddox. Who, this, this is a submission from one Luke Miller. Luke Miller chiming in. Trying to stump Smythe. N.E.W. jurors. Luke Miller. <laughs> Who is the Yankees 2009 opening day right fielder? Um, oh, boy. Uh, I'm going, I'm not exactly sure. I'm thinking Swisher might be a bit of a, a little bit too easy since he was the main right fielder for most of the year. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, X go and give it to you and go Xavier Nady. Come on, man. <laughs> nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. All right. There's one final round. Very difficult. Are you ready for this? As ready as I'm going to be. Okay. There's only two questions. And then maybe we'll take a couple questions from people if they have questions for you about what you do or uh, doing stats or any, any baseball knowledge they need. I feel comfortable you'll be able to answer their question. So the first one comes from Cheesesteak Fest. Mm, one of the better kinds of fests. It involves this person. What TV station did I make my first on-air appearance with? Um, oh, it just keeps going. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, was it Allentown, PA? It was Allentown, PA, and it was Service Electric, two sports. All right. But, yeah, Allentown, PA. All I, right. uh, I mean, God, I wasn't sure that the station or the call letters, what have you. I, I, I understand. Sorry. And it's kind of a crazy story. I was a sophomore at LaSalle University and I called that I was trying to just get work, get jobs. Uh, was it? Half going to 34 to 33 kills me in graphics, says Luke Miller. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was a sophomore in college and they used to do Patriot League men's, women's basketball double headers. And the person that they had hired left suddenly and they said, Meredith, if you want to do it, we'll let you do it. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. So they handed me, it was a live broadcast. It was Lehigh Lafayette or Lehigh somebody. And I showed up, they handed me a mic and said, when the red light is on, go. <laughs> that was the training. <laughs> Rest is and, it, and it's a good lesson that if something comes up, just, just take it. Just say, I'll do it and figure it out later. Here's another lesson. I hope somebody burned those tapes. <laughs> I, I won't hold it against you. Uh, this Rhode Island Ram doesn't hold it against you that you went to LaSalle, A-10 rivals, etc. I know. One of my best volleyball games was at Rhode Island. All right. I think we had a good team for a long time. So I, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. And then I led the uh, Atlantic 10 in injuries. <laughs> so, you know, what are you going to do? All right, last one. I think you might know who this one's coming from. Who is mom's favorite? <laughs> that one from Katie Smythe, I believe? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> that must have been from my sister. Uh, pretty crazy story. Uh, we are the Smythes. Um, she is now Katie Smith because she married a Matthew Smith. What? But smell, smell, smell. Spelled S M I T H. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's like From traditional. To S M I T H. That's the years of people pronouncing Smythe as Smith by mistake. Now she's actually Smith. And now they're probably just calling her Smythe all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you didn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> who is mom's favorite? Now, this could be a princess bride reverse psychology situation. <laughs> Um, of course, Katie's the favorite. Yeah. She said, I'm his sister, and we all know it's always been him. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll have a quick second here. Does anybody have a question for James? Anybody, anybody, anybody? This could go really awry. Who knows? Yeah. 
Let's see. <laughs> Just scroll on down. Oh, actually, I think I have some in here. How are you enjoying quarantine? Um, it's going, right? We're all in the same boat here, right? Uh, just staying inside, watching a lot of TV, catching up on Netflix and whatnot. Have you watched the Tiger thing yet? The Tiger King? Uh, I have not, but I heard that is that is like the big new buzz, buzzy uh, Netflix show, right? Yeah. I'm about halfway right. through. It's very bizarre. <laughs> I recommend it, but I'm confused by it. And it's weird. It's super weird. Uh, somebody wants to know, who's your favorite Yankees prospect right now? Um, hmm. um, now, who might be here soonest, like Michael King, I find pretty intriguing. And considering the Yankees starting pitching depth, he's someone that I think could really contribute uh, once the season gets started. Um, but I guess when you're thinking long term, it's easy to dream on a guy like uh, Jason Dominguez, even if he isn't here for another two, three, four years. Three, four years just yeah. because here's a guy who hasn't played a professional game yet, and he's being ranked in the top 40 among all prospects in baseball. And, you know, they're talking about him being a Mar the Martian, uh, a future Mike Trout or somebody like that who's just 16 years old. So when they signed him, so he's someone that the sky's the limit and there's really no uh, – no ceiling for him at this point, and we'll, we'll find out when he gets into professional games. Madvin, just needling, needling. He wants to remind you that King was up last year and he came out of the bullpen for one game. Right, in Texas. Yes. He knows, Madvin. Why, why are you trying to cause trouble? Always trying to needle. Madvin is a troublemaker. Troublemaker. Absolute troublemaker. Uh, World Series prediction. I mean, that's going to be very difficult right now because we don't even know if there's going to be baseball. Um, let's see. Um, happening. That's my prediction. Happening. Uh, I like it. No. Uh, hopefully we can actually have some semblance of a season and, and our lives can get back to normal and people are healthy. Um, as for the postseason, I will go with it's, yes, it's chalk, uh, but I'll go Yankees over Dodgers. Okay, I think a lot of people are going to like that. Uh, somebody wants to know, who's your favorite Yankees fan that you live with? I hope it's your wife. But I, don't, I don't know if she's watching this or else it's somebody else. I don't know. It, it is my wife, Kim. <laughs> good, good. She, she grew up outside of Boston and had to deal with a lot of Red Sox fans growing up. So she grew up in the belly of the beast up there in New England as a Yankees fan, very difficult. That had to be a, a hard cross to bear up that way. Yeah. All right. Uh, what, what was your favorite Yankees game ever? Hmm. Um, we're very fortunate to have had a lot to choose from um, over the years. Um, I'll say, I guess nothing, uh, nothing really beats uh, winning, having your team win the World Series for the first time when you're 10 years old. So I'll go with uh, Game 6 of the 1996 World Series. Um, but uh, at the same time, being in the booth for Derek Jeter's walk-off hit uh, to end his Yankee Stadium career is, uh, is uh, pretty tough to beat, too. People want to know what I'm drinking. Sparkling water, folks. Sparkling water. Anything else, Yankees, life, anything related that you'd like to get get out there today? Get off your chest. Um, I wish I had a clever comment, right? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, that's okay. Thank you so much for hanging out for a little bit and joining me. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Thanks for having me. This, is, this has been fun. I'm going to tally up the score. I don't, I don't know how I'm tallying things up, but maybe I'll have Medvin or Luke on here and maybe even Troy and see – if we can get some type of tournament of Yankees, Yankees fans slash yes workers going here. Sounds good. Small potatoes for those guys. Small those guys. potatoes. I feel like you, you're going to just, you're going to clear the field. You're going to be score head and shoulders above the rest of them. Although I'm sure Troy, if he's listening, he's going to chime in right now. <laughs> Quacks. 
Oh, Quags. Oh my gosh. Don't, don't, I did not forget about Quags. Quags would be fantastic as well. There's a lot of people at Yes that would really have a good time with this and would be excellent at this. So maybe I'll talk to some of the producers and we can get something going.